like a bow. All right, ladies, this is Alex, your toxic dating coach. And today we're going to talk about if a guy's acting hot and cold, always remember this, okay? Um, because everybody's going to encounter hot and cold people in their lives, all right? And if you're a nice person, you're going to always focus on the niceness and ignore the negatives. And I want you to keep some things in mind if you're be, going to be interacting with these types of people. All right now, look. If you're somebody who is a nice girl, um, there are two things I need to tell you guys. One, um, I have a seminar coming up about social intelligence. That's right, social intelligence. It's gonna be December fourth in New York City. I want you guys to attend. It's gonna be a um, if the first part of my seminar is gonna be that day. Um, attend because it's it's something that I'm working on. I am really excited, and I believe that social intelligence is is the key to succeeding in life. Um, if you don't develop social intelligence, you're pretty much gonna be naive and somebody that other people are gonna use for their benefit. And if you're talented and you have no social intelligence, somebody's gonna use your intelligence, I mean, somebody's gonna use your mastery for their own. Look at Tesla and Thomas Edison, right? That's an example of that. Tesla had no social intelligence. Edison had high social intelligence. Who do you remember? You remember Edison. You know, so develop that social intelligence through coming to that course. It's going to be really fun. Trust me. I, I, I am so excited about this. You guys have no idea. And um, in my new course, Nice Girl is out now to purchase. Purchase it now or I'm closing the channel. So the first thing is this, okay? Um, you can purchase it under the description down below and you can purchase your tickets under the description down below. Tickets are running out, people. Okay, I'm going to have it in my apartment. Um, so we don't have a lot of room here, people. So the first thing is this, is that hot and cold men, people who act hot and cold, especially men, blind you from reality. Um, because when you get, when somebody's acting hot and cold, what they're doing is that they're making you emotional. And the reason why you they're making you emotional is because you cannot predict them. What you cannot predict naturally makes you more emotional. How? Because if you give a rat, a reward for every time they do something if you consistently give them that reward they're going to become acclimated and not as rash and not as emotional they're you're going to notice that the brain doesn't fire off dopamine because it's predictable but if you give a rat a reward once out of every two or three four times he does something then when he gets a reward it's gonna he's get he's gonna get more dopamine which is gonna feel better which in other words is gonna make him more emotional how don't cold people give you that gambling effect where you're you don't know whether or not they're gonna be there you you don't know when the coldness is coming you don't know when the warmth is coming so you're constantly waiting cortisol levels are high you're constantly waiting to re, to get that release of cortisol to self-soothe right and so what's happening here is that you're becoming self-absorbed. You're not paying attention to the guy. You're not noticing how he's manipulating you. You're not noticing him changing. You're becoming self-absorbed, essentially. Your rationality is your number one tool. Your number one tool to survive. Because for women, men's responsibility is to lie about their value. And women's responsibility is to be able to identify a false advertisement. But if you're so self-absorbed, always thinking about yourself, always feeling insecure, which is nothing wrong with that. But if you're constantly in that mode, you're going to miss out on signs of manipulation. Because you have to understand this. The Maslow hierarchy of needs makes you, puts your physical security as the number one thing to focus on. If you're, if you're not, if you don't feel safe, you're not going to think of other things. You're not going to think of higher matters, right? In the same light, if you feel insecure, you're not going to pay attention to people's nonverbals. You're not going to pay attention to somebody changing. You're not going to pay attention to the subtle things that reveal manipulation because you're in secure and when you feel insecure your number one thing is to remove that feeling of insecurity right so by turning inward at somebody also is an unconscious sign that you feel like they're high value naturally if you make somebody feel insecure if you make somebody feel um if you make somebody feel like just insecure through hot and cold they are unconsciously saying that you're high value because you only feel that kind of insecurity at, a, at the, in the presence of somebody who's high value for the most part. 
right? So that's the first thing. Remember, is that re tolerating hot and cold behavior will get you emotional, will make you irrational, will make you act out of out of character, and you pretty much shut yourself off from the world because you're trying to fix this issue from within. You're feeling turmoil and you don't like it, and so you stop reading people. You stop observing people and that's and, and that's your number one power which is your empathy as a human the second thing to remember um it, it, so so what i'm trying to say is that you just lose your ability to empathize i mean <laughs> essentially um the second thing to remember is emotions create co impulsive patterns that cannot be controlled and those emotions become predictable the easiest types of people to control and manipulate and predict are emotional people emotional men and women people who have high egos you can easily predict their behaviors so when somebody likes you it makes no sense that they're randomly cold with you it makes no sense you got to understand the logic behind liking somebody it's a compulsion it's like if you're addicted to weed you're, 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 it, there's no such thing as hot and cold with weed. You're always going to smoke. Like, the, 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 there's no such thing as, as we say, oh, why is the Lexus being cold with me? Like, oh, yeah, I, you, no, motherfucker, there's no such thing as that. It's like, it's like when you smoke weed, you're, you're consistently addicted to it, so you're going to be consistent with it. You're, you're not going to be hot and cold. You get what I'm trying to say? So if somebody professes that they like you and they're acting hot and cold, listen to me. That makes no sense. It makes no logical sense. Remember, when you like somebody, it's an emotion that's so intense that you cannot control yourself. So you, you, you're going to be predictable. You're going to be predictable. Unless you watch my channel and you've learned your lesson through losing somebody, which is rare that people learn their lesson, the only logical explanation is that they don't like you that much. And that's how people act when they don't like somebody. When I don't like a girl, I'm inconsistent. People, that's just how it is. Stop trying to rationalize it. A hot and cold guy doesn't like you that much. And if he does like you, is that the type of love you want to have in your life? Somebody who's inconsistent? What kind of relationship you're trying to repair from your past? Oh, wait. <laughs> yes, most likely you're trying to re pre repair a relationship you've had with somebody in your past who was hot and cold. That's why they're triggering you. Three, don't let oxytocin forgive and forget. <laughs> Remember the coldness. They say more. In other words, oxytocin causes you to forget the things that people did to you that are negative. Think about you being a zebra. And you're surrounded by other zebras. But around you guys is a, is a, is a pack of wolves waiting for you, or fucking lions, waiting for you guys to split up. Let's just say one of your zebras bites you in the ass. And then your other zebra buddy kicks you, right? Are you going to leave the zebra group? Of course not. You want to know why? It doesn't matter how abusive they are. You feel like leave. if you leave them, there's something worse out there for you. So the neurochemical that brings you back to the, to the group is called oxytocin. It, it, even though they're physically abusing you, even though they hurt you, you feel like the other alternative is, is, is worse than this. So you stay with them. So what oxytocin does is not that it tells you to stay with them and that the other thing is worse, so don't do that. No, 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 no. That's not how the brain rationalizes those those um, neurochemicals. Oh, not, not neurochemicals. But don't be, be people, honestly, when I say this, I read these things in books that are, are verified. Um, you know, so it's kind of like, don't think that I'm trying to act like I know it all. You know what I'm saying? Um, so... When you feel those emotions, you don't say, the zebra doesn't say, oh, you know, like, I'm not going to go out there because the fucking lions are going to kill me. No, what the zebra feels then is, a, is a, it, what, what, what the zebra feels is, a, is a, an emotional desire to return to the group, even if they're abusing them. And we see that in relationships. We see that with friends. We see that with families, right? And so what oxytocin does is that it motivates you to forgive and forget. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy to influence people, learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive, and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life, your spiritual life, honestly, um, your relationship life, your family life, your career life, this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces, one is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15. 
16. Holy shit. Oh my God, he's a bad fucking uncle. He's a, he's a bad uncle. Get him. Shut up, Melissa. You should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's, it's your bodyguard. Without this, your, whatever feminine energy you create, will be destroyed by the outside because your your fem your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're going to be talking about how to um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man, <laughs> you know, it, you know. Now, the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy. Right. This one would this one will teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self-awareness healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo uh, mastering voice qualities and, ex and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly, it's, it's, it, it, this will supercharge, like, like, like Kayo Ken, your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women on power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace. And even the dress code, they, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. And how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you can read people better. Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um nine at ninety nine dollars. Um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video right there. You'll see it, and you can pre-order that course. It's going to be out by, by the end of next month or the beginning of February, of, of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10-day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think the, the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel.